have never said a year ago that this would happen on my campus. 30 something percent Jews, proud Jews, Zionists, such strong Jewish and Israel community, pro-Israel communities, this would never happen. It happened. People were being, you know, verbally, maliciously attacked for saying, I believe in the right to a state of Israel. <laughs> the anti-Israel sentiment has only escalated. The campus is going to become more and more polarized. It's been more hostile a feel on campus, which didn't used to be the case. I never thought that any anti-Israel activity would happen on this campus. I've been at university campuses discussing and dealing with these issues. I've seen the, the, the very difficult situation that Jewish students face. They are on the front line. They're the ones who are exposed. There are going to be moments where you feel scared, to be frank, because it's, it's general large groups of people who seem intimidating and who are very loud and who seem to have power in numbers. The negativity and the loudness, the abrasiveness on campus make it difficult for me to be open about supporting Israel. It's not the most popular point of view to have to be supportive of Israel. Shame on you! Shame on you! Israel has become a hot topic on our campus. Tensions are rising. This past semester, we've seen speakers. We've seen a much larger presence on social media. We've seen various protests. This is part of a, a very widespread orchestrated anti-Israeli campaign. It's very uncomfortable for students who care about Israel. It's a little bit scary because I kind of never know how students will react to my pro-Israel sentiment. Even openly talking with other students on campus, and, and professors especially. I'm proud to be a member of Faculty for Palestine. The Students for Justice in Palestine have a huge, wide-reaching, vocal faculty support. The professors are our biggest challenge. Students come and go, but with professors, they stay. They're role models. Many of them have tenure, and so they can say and teach whatever they want. So we can say this, and Hamas is a terrorist organization, sure. They also do great health care in kindergartens. But Hamas doesn't recognize Israel. So what? You see it in Colombia, uh, uh, Saliba, Khalidi, Mossad. They're all tenured professors, and they're all espousing their very anti-Israel and distorted views on the students. Israel is one of the worst offenders worldwide. It is probably today the only racist country by law. Israel was basically founded as a Jewish state on land that was ethnically cleansed from its indigenous population. Pro-Israel students sitting in classrooms like that feel like they can't voice their opinions. They, if they raise their hands, they may have grade reprisals. Nothing could be more opposed to the spirit of what a university education should really be. It's a disaster for academia and for the university system as a whole. As a student, the power dynamics are there. I, I feel powerless in a sense and very intimidated that these figures of authority and academic knowledge are basically invalidating everything I'm, I'm, I support. The tactics on campus have changed. For example, Students for Justice in Palestine have become more organized, more strategic, more focused. Working within the system, uh, they've learned how to manipulate the student government. They gather under the umbrella of BDS, which is Boycott, Divestment, and Sanctions. It really permeates social media. And students find out about it, and the network learns about it, and Israel is tainted on far more than just the campus where the activity is going on. And we're seeing a real problem on many campuses, not all campuses, but far too many campuses. Reports say anti-Israeli events in the U.S. college and university campuses has more than doubled in the fall compared to the same period last year. More than 75 events against Israel were held on U.S. universities and colleges this fall. One of the alarming things we've been seeing on campus is a rise in overt anti-Semitism. Campus police are trying to figure out who spray-painted swastikas all over the Jewish fraternity on Emory's campus. Yale University, three swastikas were drawn outside a freshman dorm. University of New Mexico police are trying to find out who scratched a swastika onto a Jewish student's dorm room door. We've heard many instances of students feeling bullied. Fuck you, Zionist scums. There are 
some campuses where students have actually feel intimidated um, because they're wearing a Magan David uh, or a kippa on campus. But this is rare, especially in the U.S. campuses. A little different than Canada. The first time that you experience something like this, so totally intimidating, and you're going to be taken aback by it, and you're going to be like shocked and appalled that such a thing could happen on your college campus. New at 11, tensions between Jews and Palestinians tonight. Some fake flyers passed out by students. The flyer has the headline, eviction notice. We regret to inform you that your suite is scheduled for demolition in three days. At the very bottom in small print, it said, note, this is a mock eviction meant to show what Palestinians suffer from every day under the hand of Israelis. People felt intimidated that these were slipped under the door at night anonymously. I think a lot of students feel harassed and uncomfortable in their own living situations. These eviction notices, they're not interested in creating any solutions. The people who do this have no interest in dialogue. We Palestinians have nothing to dialogue about with Zionists. When we reach out to them, they will not dialogue with us. They will not um, sponsor an event that is in both of our interests. It's really hard to dialogue with people who don't want to have anything to do with you. As a person who spent much of his life speaking Hebrew... By the Orient, propagating and... murder is not an expression of free speech. Hey, shut up. Whenever pro-Israel students have events, Students for Justice in Palestine will literally shout down the speaker. This is not an example of free speech. They will stage a walkout, in some cases even curse at the speaker. They're notorious for doing this. My only purpose today is that this event is shut down. Nani Gowry speaks for Israeli apartheid. It sounds like it was a very specific thing that happened nationally. They had their very specific script that they were reading from a piece of paper about how Noni Darwish supports Israeli apartheid. It's nationally organized. It's not something that students came up with at UNM. Of course, there can be legitimate criticism of Israel. If you take a look at Israel's news, you see an energetic debate every single day of the week. But there's a difference between criticizing and actual anti-Semitism. With anti-Zionism, often it takes the form of anti-Semitism, so there's kind of this fine line. Definitions of anti-Semitism change. The way you oppose Jews in any given era is different. Now we live in the time of the Jewish state. So because this is the era of the Jewish state, the attack of anti-Semites is focused on that. And what are the Jewish people doing right now? Are you doing enough? to stop your racist, apartheid, genocidal state. Anti-Semitism uh, is, it's like racism. It's, it's, not a, it's not a fashionable thing to do. It's not really, a, it's an illegal activity in many places. But anti-Zionism is not illegal, and it becomes a proxy for anti-Semitism. When they protest vehemently, we are not anti-Semitic, we are anti-Zionist. Now, there are certain ways to test this. I like Natan Sharansky's definition of anti-Semitism. He calls it the three Ds. If we see that Israel is either delegitimized, demonized, or we see a double standard in the argument against Israel, that would qualify as anti-Semitism. With delegitimization, Israel's very founding is questioned. And if Israel is illegal in the first place, then the Jewish people have no right to be there to defend themselves. Israel is a settler colonial project that does not have the right to exist. The Zionist state of Israel in and of itself is a crime against humanity. They're not saying, let's have these borders. They're saying, let's have all of Israel gone. Israel has no right to exist. What it essentially means is that from the river, meaning the Jordan River, to the sea, meaning the Mediterranean Sea, Palestine will be free, meaning all of Israel, as it currently exists, will be dissolved, and in its place will be a Palestinian state. Two-state solution is off the table. No, one state. And check this out. One state, maj majority rules. Us, the Muslims. <laughs> in focusing so much on the Palestinians' right of self-determination, which I totally believe in, 
people completely forget about the Jewish right of self-determination. If you are an anti-Zionist, what you are essentially saying is that the Jews have no right to live with sovereign rights in their historical homeland. It's not your homeland. Y'all came from Europe. It's not your homeland. With demonization, oftentimes we see context removed, attributing an evil intention to the Israelis as though whatever they do is not for security reasons, it is because they want to torture, abuse, or humiliate the Palestinians. There can be thousands of rockets that come into Israel, and then Israel responds. They only look at the response. I don't think it's acceptable criticism of Israel when Israel becomes villainized, when Israel becomes the big bad devil. You see these pamphlets that depict Jews with hooked noses and sucking children's blood, and I think that is classic anti-Semitism. Five, six, seven, eight, Israel is a part of state. This is not self-defense. This is a genocide. They literally make up things about the Jewish state. They call Israel an apartheid state. They say that Israel is committing genocide, and if anyone has ever been to Israel, they know that's not true. They try to associate buzzwords. For example, Zionism and racism. They put these two words together as though one is the other. If they do it over and over and over again, if you have never heard of Zionism, the first thing you're going to associate that word with is racism. And then when pro-Israel students claim to be Zionists, you're going to think in your, in your head, oh, well, you must be racist. So that's a way that they sort of use language to invert reality and really to promote their agenda. Most grotesque of all, and unfortunately quite common, including on campuses, is the comparison with Nazi Germany, the ultimate scandalous inversion of our time. This is something so distorted, so twisted, so repulsive, and yet commonplace. Students for Justice in Palestine hold an event called Israel Apartheid Week, where they lie about Israel for a week in a way that demonizes the state of Israel. The Nakba was a campaign of genocidal ethnic cleansing initiated by the Israeli regime to carve out their own colonial entity in the Middle East. They want to go out into the middle of campus where there's going to be a lot of students walking through and use guerrilla theater, uh, use public displays to demonize Israel. There's people who are pretending to be soldiers at checkpoints. Oh, no, that's it. The Arabs, then Israeli life is worth more than all of you combined. We have apartheid walls put up in major sections of campus where students are walking between classes, accusing Israel of being apartheid, accusing Israel of killing babies. All of this is meant to demonize, to not give any context. And they go out and do this on campus because they're going to reach people who know very little about Israel. They were having a die-in, which is students lying, pretending to be dead in the middle of campus. And they're kind of trying to intimidate and frighten people on campus. With double standard, Israel is being held to a higher standard than any other country in the world. If we just look at the issues that people are focusing on, um, human rights issues in general, these are issues that are, are not even on par with the human rights violations that are happening in so many other places in the world. It's Syria, China, other countries that are committing atrocious human rights violations that are never discussed. The one conflict that the world seems more concerned about than any other is the conflict between Israel and the Palestinians. You can take a look at the United Nations, for example. There's a good exercise in double standards. When you take all of the condemnations that the United Nations has of what's going on in places in Africa and Ukraine and all these terrible things happening around the world, the majority of resolutions coming out from the UN condemning what's happening in the world, the majority are against Israel. Israel is uh, the biggest violator of human rights in the world. Grave violations and abuses of human rights are still committed. Israel pursuing its uh, policy of ethnic cleansing. They don't talk about China or Russia or Iran. They're barely interested in it. Only obsess about Israel. This is the anti-Semitism of our time. It's not even a question. One of the most recent examples of the double standard against Israel is the BDS movement. BDS is spreading across U.S. campuses. Frankly, this has gone global. The boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement is really what's changing the equation. With a vote of 20 to 12 to 1, that passes. <laughs> During the last two years, we've seen a greater frequency of the introducing of divestment 
resolutions to student governments. What we see in their tactic generally is that they push out a lot of anti-Israel propaganda and then call for punishment, and the punishment is the boycott or the divestment from companies doing business in Israel. If divestment passes, which it has on a few campuses, it gives it an air of legitimacy. Even if they're not actually going to pull the funds away, what it does do is pass a statement, and it makes it seem that the student body is against Israel. I think we need to be concerned uh, about what goes on during those hearings. It is very hateful. There are lies told. It's our duty as socially aware individuals of this university to vote for the divestment from the genocidal apartheid state of Israel. Please vote for the divestment from the genocidal apartheid state of Israel. On a regular basis, I'm fine. I walk around and my t-shirts would say Israel on them. I walk around with a Jewish star. I have friends that walk around in Kippot and it's fine, no one's gonna attack you on the street, no one's gonna start yelling at you in the middle of campus. It's only when there are times with high pressure, like during this divestment vote, students are definitely intimidated. A lot of the pro-Palestinian students were screaming and just very offensive towards the pro-Israel students who spoke at the meeting. Pro-Israel students faced threats. Students were also called dirty Jews, things like this. Especially those on central student government were called on the phone saying, we know where you live like vote with us or else. All of these disparaging insults accompanied by threats of violence are messages that I and other members of central student government have been receiving this past week. To say that this is a non-violent peaceful movement, I would seriously disagree, especially with the number of emails and harassing texts and harassing voicemails and harassing calls that have caused me to miss class for a week. Ultimately, the vote was to reject the resolution. And for now, Things are calm, but um, we definitely expect BDS to be back again, and we don't think that this is over at all. This week, the American Studies Association voted to endorse a boycott of Israel's academic institutions. They're boycotting academics, which is like the opposite of freedom of academics, which is what universities are supposed to be teaching, is that many ideas and many perspectives are important. This boycott singles out Israel. It doesn't boycott any other country academically. They created an ASA town hall uh, where the town hall, um, instead of being an open discussion about the pros and cons of the boycott, had six speakers. Every single one of them was in favor of the boycott. None of them advocated a two-state solution. They were quite clear about what they meant by the end of occupation. They weren't talking about 1967 borders. They were talking about the establishment of the state of Israel. There was a tremendous backlash. This was condemned and denounced by 250 presidents and institutions. I think academic boycotts are abhorrent if you believe in academic freedom. Of all the countries in the world that might be thought to have human rights abuses, the idea that there's only one that is worthy of boycott is, I think, uh, beyond outrageous. This exclusionary position is designed to create such pressure that this nation will feel itself totally isolated, a pariah. A lot of anti-Semitism is exactly about that. The long history of anti-Semitism is full of such exclusionary measures, full of boycotts, which has been a chosen weapon of anti-Semites through the centuries. The boycott, divest, and sanctions movement really started out in the early 2000s with the head of the movement being Omar Barghouti and Ali Abunima. Definitely, most definitely, we oppose a Jewish state in any part of Palestine. Until Zionist state of Israel ends, we will continue to struggle against apartheid. No Palestinian, rational Palestinian, not a sellout Palestinian, will ever accept a Jewish state in Palestine. This is something that is not acknowledged on campuses. Um, students, they aren't aware of the aim of the BDS movement. And Norman Finkelstein, someone who is not a friend of Israel whatsoever, and, and putting it in kind words, has stated this as well. We have to be honest, and I loathe the, the disingenuousness. They don't want Israel. You'll never hear the supporters of the BDS movement advocating for a two-state solution. They're not trying to use boycotts and sanctions in order to try to create peace between the Israelis and the Palestinians. They're trying to do these things to demonize Israel and to get rid of it. That's what it's really about. You know, then at least be honest what you want. We want to abolish Israel, and this is our strategy for doing it. 
pro-Israel students who want to stand up against BDS feel like their voices are not heard, and often their voices are drowned out even by members of the student government. New tonight, Ohio University is responding after the student body president poured a bucket of fake blood onto her head while calling for OU to cut all ties with Israel. A student senate president, I'm sending a message of student concern of the genocide in Gaza and the occupation of Palestine by the Israeli state. I'm urging you and OU to divest and cut all ties with academic and other Israeli institutions and businesses. That video is causing outrage on the Ohio University campus and with Jewish groups around the nation. This was not the setting, this was not the time and the place to do that as a leader of Ohio University. When the initial blood bucket challenge happened, the students reacted very strongly. People were shocked and didn't understand and a good number of students were very offended and hurt. She did this not as a student, she did this as the student senate president. The members of Bobcats for Israel came together to support Israel and to take a stance against um, the student senate president's actions. So we went to the student senate meeting and being on the senate floor with 100 plus people who were against me, it's nerve wracking when you have people screaming at you and calling you names. What do you do at that point? Do you keep doing what you're doing when the majority is screaming you down? They were under attack. They were a, a room totally outnumbered and a room full of people that were really filled with hate. People were yelling, calling us fascists, Nazis, right on the student senate floor. Just seeing the amount of support that the anti-Israel groups had, especially from the student senate who were elected as representatives of the student body really just kind of hit me like where it hurts like it wasn't these are people who are supposed to represent the student body i will never represent fascists in this body either i'm gonna see professors down there trying to assault students ripping the paper out of their hands that that was just disgraceful i was embarrassed to go to Ohio University at that point. As Becky and Gabe were reading these letters, some university presidents supporting Israel and arguing against the academic boycott of Israel, the student government leadership called the campus police to basically stop them. But they wanted to get their message out and they wanted to take a stand and finally they were arrested. In this video, Bobcats for Israel president Becky Sebo is arrested after refusing to stop speaking at Wednesday night's student senate meeting. Police arrested Sebo and three other students. Student Senate President Megan Marzak says she called police after Sebo and the others spoke out of turn. I saw Becky arrested and getting taken out in handcuffs. I couldn't just sit there in the back of the room quietly anymore. And I stood up and went to the front of the room, grabbed the transcript and kept reading about why universities won't divest from Israel. Being arrested for speaking my beliefs, showing my support for an amazing country is something I never thought would happen to me in my life. We left peacefully, got put in handcuffs, and we thought it'd be over right there. I had no idea that we'd be taken down to the precinct. Being charged with a crime, charges have not been dropped. I still have a pending criminal trial. That's where it kind of crosses the line. Because the student senate tried to silence the pro-Israel students, many members of student senate actually decided to resign. Because our turn to listen to our constituency, and what do we do? We disrupt them when they're speaking, we chant when they sit down, and we have them arrested for speaking out. All legitimacy we had is the student government, government of this university went out the door in handcuffs last Wednesday. I'm therefore standing before you this evening to tender my resignation as treasurer, effective immediately. After what's happened, I definitely feel more connected and more eager to stand up for Israel and support Israel. The Jewish community here in Athens definitely came together and is a lot stronger since everything that's happened. I've learned from this situation to not be afraid. And I've learned that from history, from my culture, about not backing down when you're confronted with lies and with hurtful words, standing your ground and not fleeing, but fighting for what you believe in. A Jewish person who's not secure and confident in their Jewish identity and doesn't know enough about Judaism, about Zionism, about Israel, is gonna be much more exposed, much uh, more vulnerable 
Perhaps one of the most important things Jewish students need is the education in what is happening, what the situation is, and it's very complex, so it's not an easy subject to get your head around, but I think it, it's worth doing that in order to stand up for yourself, stand up for your Judaism, and stand up for the state of Israel. There's so many students across the United States and beyond who support Israel and who love Israel, so we all need to rise and see. We are Zionists and we're proud. Zionism is essentially the civil rights movement of the Jewish people. It essentially states that the Jews have a right to live with sovereign rights in their historical homeland. The core of Judaism is linked to the land of Israel. There is no country, I would say, that has a stronger historical basis than the Jews living in Israel, returning to Israel or having always lived in Israel. Israel is a progressive, liberal democracy, and we see the same values in Israel as we do in the United States, whether it's freedom of religion, freedom of the press, gay rights, women's rights. It is pretty remarkable that we share so much in common with someplace so far away and in the middle of such a hotbed of countries that don't have those freedoms and values. Israel is kind of a beacon of hope for what the rest of the Middle East can become. It's important to be advocating for Israel, and students really can make a difference. I'd like to thank you all for coming out. 8,000 people for Israel. The message from Congress is clear. We stand with Israel. In Israel, it's an 18-year-old's responsibility to defend their country by joining the army. In America, England, Canada, wherever you live, as a Jewish student, it's your responsibility to defend Israel on your campus. For other students who are dealing with similar issues on their campus, I would tell them that we're here for you. There's so much support for Israel and for what you're doing on campus. For people who care about Israel on campus, now more than ever is a time for you to show leadership. It's a time for you to learn more so that you can teach more on your campus. And you'll be surprised if you're vocal and proud how many people will come to you and be part of a movement to support the state of Israel.